God with a tornado and picked him up and spewed him out someplace on the ground, Elisha said, you're wasting your time. He's in heaven. They looked and looked and looked, never could find a back body. Elisha said, I told you, you're wasting your time. God had transferred that power of the prophet from Elijah to Elisha. This is the guy who would tell the, the king of Syria, the king of Syria was just straight north of Israel. It wasn't a dominant power in those days, but it was you know, a rival power to the nation of Israel. Uh, the nation of Israel at this time, the northern ten tribes of Israel, had their capital city in a place called Samaria. The capital city, Samaria. Just about ten miles north of the capital city, Samaria, is the place where Elisha lived. North of that, Syria, whenever the king of Syria would put together his little battle plans, Elisha would send word to the king of Syria, uh, king of, of Israel, and tell him, you know, guys, watch out here, there. This is what they're going to do. And the king of Syria was baffled by this and finally said to all his work, uh, the people around him, who is on Israel's side? One of you is a spy. Somebody's telling out all of our secrets. Which one of you is against me? And they answered and said, no, none of us. It's Elisha. It's our prophet. What you talk about in your chambers here with us, he knows about it somehow, and he's telling the king about it. So the Syrian king got his army together and sent them down to Elisha's hometown, Dothan. Surrounded the city. This is, this is Elisha. He surrounds the city, and Elisha's servants said, Oh, no, what are we going to do? Elisha's servants all scared because they're surrounded by the army of the Syrians. And Elisha says to his servant, They that be for us are more than they that be for them. The ones on our side outnumber the ones on their side. And then he said, Lord, open up his eyes. God opened up the eyes of the servant, and he could see all around the hills, around the, the entire city, the, the little town they were in, all around in the hills were chariots and horsemen of angels. And then Elijah just simply said, Lord, Smite the Syrian army with blindness. Just make them blind. Immediately, everyone on lost sight. They, could, they didn't know which way to go. They're down there in a foreign country. They were surrounding the city, but now they don't even know which way the city is. They're blind. Elisha then goes to the army and says, you want to know where to go? Follow me. And he led them south about 10 miles to the capital city of Israel. And right there in the middle of the city, and then he said, God, open up their eyes. They opened up their eyes and they were surrounded by Israel. Now, this is Elisha. This is what we're talking about. This is Elisha, great prophet of God. After that had happened now, we don't know how long, how many months, maybe years, that had happened. There came a famine in the land. A famine in the land of Israel. It got, it, it was bad. It was, it was um, life-threatening kind of bad. And again, the king of Syria came down to Israel. And this time, the army surrounded the capital city, Samaria. Surround, now, now, when I say surrounded, it would have been like one man beside another man, beside another man, another man, another man, all the way around. That, that's not the way it would work. But the besiegement of a city was a, an art. You go down to the city that you're going to conquer, and you have your camp but you establish you know, little camps all the way around the city to kind of keep an eye as station sentinels that will uh, let you know if anybody's trying to escape or if they'll put together an army in the city to come out and try to get us in our weak spot. It's a matter of doing warfare. You surround the city as best you can and be ready for, for battle. That's, this is the way you fought in those days. They have atomic bombs to drop in. This is the way to fight. The, the Syrian army had surrounded the, the capital city of Samaria. And one of the reasons to do this is to keep any trade from taking place. Typically, a good city would have some kind of a water supply. So you don't have to worry about you know, thirsting to death. But the, the food is going to run out eventually. If you go a week or two weeks or a month or many months, eventually the stores of food in the city are going to wear out. They're, 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 you're going to starve. It had become so bad. The famine inside the city had become so bad that... Two ladies, each of them had, a, had an infant, a baby. They got together and they came up with a plan. 
They said, what we'll do is on this day, we're going to kill my baby and eat it. And then tomorrow, we're going to kill your baby and eat it. So according to the plan, they killed the one baby, they ate the baby, and then when the next day came, the other mother had hidden her baby. So the, the other mother, who had already killed her baby and had already eaten half of her baby, she's all upset about this, and so she goes out and she sees the king of Israel walking along on top of the wall. And as he's walking along the wall in his royal garment, she hollers out to the king, and he said, what ails you? And she said the whole story. We ate my baby yesterday, but today she's hidden her baby. Make her give her baby up. And the king ripped his clothes and started walking along in the morning. God, what are, you, what are you doing? When he ripped his clothes, the people of the city could see that underneath his, his kingly garment, he had sackcloth. You know, that cloth that you make burlap sack of, had sackcloth under his garment against his skin to remind him, the irritation to remind him to be in the morning and be praying that God would do something. The famine was bad. I mean, it's not pretty bad when you're killing your kids and eating them. Bad famine. Well, finally the king had enough. When, he, when this thing with the women, the mothers took place, the king made the statement. Basically, he said, I'm going to kill Elijah, or Elisha. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to get his head today. I don't know why it is, but some, for some reason, I guess, he thought that it was Elisha's fault. Uh, you know, obviously, Elisha didn't wave a wand and fought the famine. But he apparently thought that Elisha should wave a wand and the famine go away. And he's a prophet of God. He ought to do something about it. And how many times I've thought, oh, I wish, I, wish we pastors had a magic wand. We could just wave it and the problem would go away. I don't know why God lets problems come along, but problems will be here. There will be famine in your life. There will be some droughts and there will be hard times and you'll go through the valley of the shadow of death and I can't take that away. I don't have that kind of authority. If I did, see, God can't entrust that to me. If I, had, if I had the authority, if I had the power to do that, I would wave that wand every time any little problem came up. But for whatever reason, God sometimes wants us to walk through the valley. And this was a valley for them. And the king said, I'm kill Elijah. And I'm going to chop his head off today. Somehow he had sent a messenger through and he, close in behind the messenger, got through the besiegement and went about 10 miles north to Dothan where Elisha was. And Elisha was sitting there with the elders of the city and he said, look at this guy's coming. He's coming to chop my head off. Look at this. Look at this. Sure enough, within a few minutes here, they come. Here's the king. And the king is basically saying to Elijah, look what God's doing. Now, why should we wait on God anymore? Why should we trust in God anymore? And Elisha said, Tomorrow, about this time, tomorrow the famine will break. The famine was so bad. The famine was so bad. That this is a silver coin uh, my son gave me for Christmas. I keep it with me just about all the time. Silver. I mean silver, really silver. About one ounce of fine silver on the market Friday, this was worth $16 and some cents. You know, it goes up and goes down. But So I carry around, I'm not broke. <laughs> I carry around with me about a $16 piece. It may, it may go up, may go down, but I've got a silver, a gold piece that's not got a it's not an American gold coin or any other country gold coin. It's just a coin, but it's made out of silver, about one ounce. But about one ounce. The famine was so bad that it would take 40 of these to buy one head of a donkey. That's how bad. One head of a donkey is not going to put out a lot of food. And who wants to eat a donkey's head anyway? But if you 